The Laughter Permitted Podcast is brought to you by Ally. Do it right. Hello. Welcome to Laughter Permitted. I'm Julie Fowdy. I'm Lynn Ozawi. Our guest this week is U.S. soccer superstar, Sam Mewis. <laughs> <laughs> All suddenly I felt like I was in a stadium. <laughs> it was uh it was so much fun to chat with her. It really was. Yeah, this was our second time chatting with Sam. We had her on with Rose Lavelle back in 2019 after they won the World Cup. And I'll have to tell you, Jules, with this episode, it felt like I got a little glimpse into what life was with the U.S. women's national team is like. It kind of felt like I was on a bus ride with you guys or even just waiting for the bus. Just the banter and sort of the lightness. And also, y'all are soccer nerds, like big-time soccer nerds. (laughs) It's funny you say bus ride because... You know, that was our most cherished time together. When you when you step away from the game, I remember looking back and people would be like, what do you miss the most? And I'd be like, bus rides. Mm. Mind you, this was in the day pre-cell phones and uh, social media. So bus rides were a, a lot more chatter than screen time. But <laughs> yeah, that's funny you say that because bus rides are precious for us. Mm. We often talk about like that time on the bus. Mia even would say, I would be so sad when I'd have to stay for interviews and you guys would get to go back on the bus together. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh. Yeah. So maybe, maybe Dope Village, just imagine that we're all on a bus ride together for this episode. Maybe we should make every episode feel like a bus ride. That's going to be my life goal. All right. In Sam's incredible career, she won a World Cup, as we all know, in 2019. She was U.S. Soccer Female Player of the Year in 2020. And at the Olympics in 2020, she also won a bronze medal playing, this is very cool, alongside her older sister, Christy. And during Sam's pro club career, she won three in WSL championships and the FA Cup in her stint at Manchester City, at Man City. She also won a national championship at UCLA. In fact, Sam is one of the rare few in the United States to win a FIFA Youth Women's World Cup, a Senior Women's World Cup, a professional championship, I just mentioned she got three, and an NCAA title. Boom! I think it's safe to say Sam is a giant of the game. Earlier this year, though, Sam had to sadly step away from the game she loves. She announced her retirement because she was unable to recover from a chronic knee injury, which we talk about. And we also get into her current gig as editor-in-chief of the women's game at Men and Blazers. And, of course, her current thoughts on the U.S. team, how she's hosting two podcasts about women's soccer and, you know, working to amplify the global game for women's soccer. Dope Village, if you're looking for some joy in your day, well, you got yourself on the right bus. So get comfortable listening. It's Sam Mewis. Kick back, relax, and unwind. Let's have a good time. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hi, darling. Good to see your smiling face. It is so great to see you, too. Aw. Over in England? Yes, I am here in London. Um, I was in Manchester for like four days. I went to the Manchester Derby on Saturday. And then we just took the train to London yesterday, and we're here till Monday. Aw. So get some good cis time in. Oh, and you're staying with her. Yay. Yeah, Yeah, I know. I'm excited. My husband's here too. So we're on a week long double date. See, that's the way to go. You combine a little work, a little fun. We call that twerking, play and work. I'm really good at it. Love it. I know. That's been my trick lately is anytime I have a work trip to a cool place, I'm like, let's go. We're going to stay after. And it's like been awesome. You're a plorker. Welcome to the plork club. Professional plork. I want to give a <laughs> professional plorker. <laughs> I love it. I want to give a little behind the scenes that as we were setting up, Sam had 
what looks to be a lovely iced coffee drink hand delivered to her. I do. I do. I did have it hand delivered and it's right here. <laughs> and she was going to try and do the whole podcast crisscross applesauce. That would have never worked for me. <laughs> crisscross I applesauce. Like two seconds. I did. I literally did last two seconds. I was like, this does not feel right. And this, <laughs> I can't do this. So I had to, of course, just come right up here onto this nice comfy surface. <laughs> Can any soccer players go cross-legged because of hip stuff? Is that the hip? Is it the hip flexor that is uh, so dang tight? Oh, it was just my knee being bent. It just had a not yeah. good, not a good angle on the ground. You know, in yoga, when they're like, just sit and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay. In yoga, for me recently, they're just getting on their knee, doing like the knee kneeling, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, how can people do this? Yeah. Did I just sit here in this pose? I'm like, this is not comfortable. Just no. this is not relaxing in this pose. No, no good. No. Okay. Should we do this? All right, Let's Sam. First thing we always do: set the scene. Where you're at? Oh, you've already done that. We don't need to. We've set the scene. I know. I did set the scene. Yeah. We uh we got that. Okay. You, my friend, in January, put some b- big news out into the world. Uh, that you were retiring from playing soccer, and I, after fighting through injury, and I, I, I mean, I, I was, I was very sad to hear that news for you because I knew you had and uh, had fought through injury for the last two years. Um, so just take me back to that, and and I'm sorry to start on that, but just I can't imagine how hard that must have been, given that it wasn't really your decision on timing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that I, I'm i not sure how that came through. Like, I didn't want to retire. Like, I still, every yeah. time I'm around the game, still now, I'm like, I would do anything to have my cleats on and to just be training. Like, I don't need to hmm. play in a World Cup final or do any anything crazy. I literally would kill to just train for 20 minutes and, like, kick the ball around and be able to run on the grass. And I... I think in my retirement message, I was a little bit hung up on explaining like the logistics and like, well, my knee has this cartilage damage and I've been dealing with this for a long time. And I think something I've been reflecting on is just like how long and how difficult it was for me to come to that conclusion and how I felt like I kept waiting for somebody to swoop in and save me and be like, all you have to do is this. And you'll right. be back. And it just never <laughs> happened. And so in yeah. the two years, really, in between when I played and when I announced my retirement, I just was doing my rehab every day. I was, like, again, right. like, kind of waiting for the phone to ring for somebody yeah. to be like, here's the answer. <laughs> Who is and it, solving it, this? <laughs> yes. And it just never came. And so I, it's not that I was like, okay, time to wrap it up. It's over. It was that I had no answer and I physically still can't do that. Can't. Right do it so yeah if somebody came to me with an answer now I'd be right back out there on the field I just don't <laughs> yeah. know that it exists so I don't know if I answered your question but it was so yeah hard that's and frustrating too because yeah. you do I mean it's the unknown right it's yeah. almost like I, I, if someone had told me right away like oh it's just gonna it's never gonna happen again then maybe that's a little bit easier to accept but because of the unknown I imagine it 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 becomes this well if i keep going maybe maybe i might right yeah yeah and there was a lot of messaging too like it was a lot of mixed messaging like a lot of people who are in your life personally are like if anybody can do it you can yeah. and sure, you're so yeah. strong and like i believe in you and and you get attached right. to that and that story mm-hmm. of like this is going to be the best comeback story that ever happened <laughs> but then there is like medical people being like we told you to stop 5 years ago you really need to stop. Yeah. And then there's like yeah. the rogue medical person that's like, I can fix it. And uh, who do you listen to? And so it, yeah. what it came down to really, and and the the person who has been with me this whole entire time through this journey was my husband, Pat. And what it came down to was Pat and I looking at each other being like, what do we want the rest of our life to look like? Yeah. Do we want to be able to go on walks? And at right. a certain point, having been through periods where I couldn't go on walks, I was like, yeah, I think I have to start trying to prioritize myself as a human, not just a player. So it was, it was like a crazy decision. Yeah. And then the other compounding part of it, I'm sure is that you're coming off 
when you, before you got injured, you know, winning a World Cup, uh, crushing it at Man City, ESPN FC votes you, you know, best player in the world. I mean, you were at this incredible peak, um, which is another thing. It's like, well, can I get back to that? Look at where I am right now. <laughs> and I just, oh, when you made that announcement, I was like, oh, I just know how hard that must have been. So I, I gave you a big virtual hug. Oh, well, giving thank it you. I, I appreciate it. I'll take the virtual hug. Yeah. Do you feel like there's been enough distance where you are able to see that there was a lesson in there? I mean, yeah, like there were countless lessons throughout the way. I think it's not, I am so lucky and so grateful and so fortunate to have had the career that I had. So many people helped me along the way. And so it's hard to say that I am afraid the lesson was not necessarily like an inspiring one. I think my biggest takeaway from the whole thing is that there is no organization or outside party that cares about your career as much as you do and that will do something that isn't in their best interest to make sure that that thing is in your best interest. And in that, it's like you're your own biggest advocate. And so I think the lesson that now I find myself preaching to friends and colleagues that are still playing is to advocate for yourself and look out for yourself. And when you're injured, you need to ask for what you need. You need to Mm -hmm. be honest about what you're going through and what you're dealing with. And if the treatment or the Mm -hmm. care or whatever it is that you need isn't right or isn't good enough, you have to like demand more. And I know that's not like a, a life, a positive life lesson, but I do think that taking that into the rest of our lives and realizing that we have this autonomy over our own life and it is on us to ask for what we need and ask for the most that we can mm-hmm. get is is really important. So I think that's m- the gist of what I took away through the whole thing. I just yeah. would think it's so frustrating where mentally everything's there. You're, you're strong, you're tough, you're resilient. You have all of the resource and it's just like, come on, Nee, just help me out a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, that <laughs> resonates with me a lot. Help I remember a sister out. Yeah, I remember being like, I hate my knee and being so <laughs> detached from like yeah. the fact that it's a part of me, like angry with it because it would just flare up and give out and be swollen. And I was like, this isn't mine. And I felt like, why can't I just have an, another person's knee that doesn't need it as bad as I do? Which again, is shows such a lack of perspective, like, I'm aware that that's like that that's like a crazy thing to say. Um, but I yes, that I totally resonate with what you just said. Have you made up with your knee? Are you two <laughs> fine? Honestly, like, no, <laughs> no, 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 I'm still angry at her. Yeah, I mean, I kind of am like it. It's yeah. not like I'm over it. Like, I think that I've like, look, I it took me a long time. And I've gone to a place where I can, like, laugh about it and, like, I've moved on. I have a new career. Yeah. I'm fine. But, like, I'm not over it. Like, I'm, I am still think about it all the time. I was out at a training the other day and I teared up on the sideline no. because I'm like, I wish I was out there. Like, sure. I could tear up now. Yeah. I'm not going to. Yeah. But, like, I'm not over it, which yeah. I don't know when I will be, but I'm, yeah. like, I still miss playing and I – Wish I could. Well, there will be things for the rest of your life that just trigger you that way. I mean, I I still walk out onto a field and I smell fresh cut grass on like a a sunny morning. And I'm like, I miss that smell. I miss that feeling of like laughing and sitting on the grass, putting on your boots with your your teammates. Like, oh. I know. Because it just signifies all those relationships too. Totally. Mm. So That's I feel you, Jules. I heard you say that to Roger Bennett on, on your initial pod with him, you know, talking about it. Like those relationships, it's that daily, you know, that daily interaction with those sisters you've had for so long. You miss that so much. And it's hard. It, it is honestly, it's really hard. We talk about this all the time with our 99ers group. Um, Brandy talks about this a lot. It's like, she's like, I've never been able to really replace that. And, and it's really hard. Yeah, I know. I think that is really hard. It's it's like, especially like in the professional environment and the camp environment, you're with these women every day yeah. and you like have these little inside jokes. And then you like, honestly, I kind of now live my own life. Like 
I have friends and like I have my husband and I have my family, but they're all still together. All my friends are still yeah. in the hotel <laughs> and at training. Yeah. And how dare they? They still have those day to day relationships and yeah. I'm on the outside of it now. And I love to yeah. FaceTime them and, and see them when I can, but it will never be the same. And I think that that's been the saddest and hardest part for me is that uh, yeah. that like summer camp feeling like I'm who gets that as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're pretty close to it because you kept one foot in with with your new gig, which I love. Let's talk Thank about you. that. Editor Thank in chief you. of the new women's vertical, <laughs> the women's game. You link with the men and blazers. Do you have business cards? Because just Sam Mewis, editor in chief. <laughs> Watch out. I know Women's it's pretty game. wild. It's awesome. Dun, dun, dun. I know. I, Thank you. I love it. And I think it's so friggin' smart and so needed. So for those in the dope village who don't know what Sam is doing, Sam, what is your elevator pitch when you tell people this is who I am? Okay, the women's game brought to you by the Men and Blazers Media Network. I am so excited <laughs> about this. Our goal with this is to cover women's football globally. So yeah. I think that there are so many incredible platforms covering women's soccer. Um, our main like ambition is to cover the NWSL, the U.S. Women's National Team, but also football overseas in Mexico, in Australia. Like we would love to have in England. In a, exactly in England, I think covering the WSL and the Lionesses, the Spanish League, the yep. Champions League, the World Cup and Olympics. Obviously, I think bringing kind of trying to become like the central location for coverage of all right. of these things. We do have yeah. two weekly podcasts, one of which is interviews yeah. that comes out on Thursdays. It's called Friendlies with Sam Mewis. Yeah. And we've gotten some incredible like players yeah. Yeah. from America. Like we just, Trinity Rodman is coming out, Lindsay, yeah. uh, Lindsay Horan. But then we've had Jill Scott and Lucy Bronze on players from all over. And we have high ambition to get players from m many more countries Right. And then we also just launched this week, more weekly topical show that comes out on Tuesdays. And Lynn Williams and Becky Sauerbrunn are joining me on that. They yeah, are like kind I of love rotating. That you got them on. Uh, they're yeah. amazing. I know. We've had, we've had them on, and they're just they're such thoughtful talkers. I, I'm co-opting that from a colleague. They're thoughtful talkers. They are yeah. just as you are. Yeah. So the three of you together is is yeah. magic. It's magic. It's, thank you. It's been so much fun. So that one's like. What happened over the weekend? Yeah. What's going on in the football world? New rosters yeah. dropping, kind of a more topical show. But we also, like, we're across all social media. We have a YouTube channel. I think yeah. that the resources that have, like, enabled us to do all of these things have been so incredible. Men and Blazers as a company is has yeah. been so supportive. And then our little team at the women's game, I've learned so much. And we really just want to become, like, the go-to place for global women's football. So that's the goal. Did you... Did you take this to to Roger Bennett, who with Michael Davies is is the founders of Men and Blazers and their and their empire? Um, I mean, they they're two awesome humans. One, but did you take this to him and say, "Okay, I've got an idea"? Is that how this started? It, honestly, I think it started. I did um, some live Twitch streams with Men and Blazers during the Women's World Cup in 2023 last summer, and I think we it went great. And so I honestly think we just kind of started having conversations towards the end of the year. We met up in person and it just kind of was like born and came together. I think it yeah. was like, obviously, I'm sure that Roger Bennett like was toiling over this for a while. And then he made me feel like it was partly my idea <laughs> um, as he does, because he's just a genius and is yeah, so generous so and giving and such a wonderful yeah. person. So um, I feel like we well, it was over it, pizza and beers, right? And all over the pizza and happened. beers. Exactly. So I think it, it came together <laughs> from a number of like ideas and people and men and blazers has been just again, incredibly supportive and, um, it's been so much fun. That's awesome. I know that there's kind of this thing that Julie and I do where we're like, maybe we shouldn't let people know how much fun we're having with this. Like we're having <laughs> yeah. so much fun and we get to talk with all of these amazing women and learn and grow and laugh. I know we get off a podcast. We're like, oh my God, that's was that amazing. Work? That was work. <laughs> I know. I know. So People great. ask me that all the time. They're like, how are you like enjoying your new job? And 
doing the podcasts, like, of course there is work that goes along yeah, with it. I, like, sure. won't lie. Right. Like, right, I mean, r- coming up with all the questions and there's, like, certainly some slack and some calls that I'm like, this is work. But right. when I just get to talk to <laughs> yeah. Mal Swanson yeah. or Jill Scott yeah. for 45 minutes, I'm like, that's not work. Like, that's me yeah. checking that box that I've been missing of just, like, hanging out with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, plus you're putting See? something out there that's needed. This is that's it, that's it. Yeah, and and like you're aggregating it in one place, which like we have to your point. We've had people now. I mean, when we first started covering women's soccer, too. By the way, I mean, you couldn't even go to like we'd be playing Colombia, the U.S. And I'd be like doing research on Columbia. You couldn't find anything. You couldn't yeah. find caps. You couldn't find goals. You couldn't find stories. You couldn't find anything. And now, obviously, people are covering it in a different way. And it's um, and it's drawing more attention. But to be able to provide this for people who, as we know, there are fans out there and there is an appetite for this. And so um, I just think it's fantastic what you're doing so congratulations in a way thank you you're advocating for yourself just like you were saying the lesson you learned you are advocating for this game Mm -hmm. thank you thank you for saying that i also think julie more to your point like i feel i had felt it's hard for me to watch games in europe i never know how to watch them or what channel they're on or what time they're on at yeah and i felt like there was a lack of of course you can google it and figure it out like i get that but Something we started doing really early on is making this like weekly game day weekend graphic yes. where just yes. s- the simplest thing of just Seeing putting it. what games are on, how to watch mm-hmm. them and what time. And yeah. we're doing it East Coast, which thank God, because I needed that. It's such a simple <laughs> thing that yeah. I'm sure is out there, but just kind of aggregating highlights and stories and interviews and yeah. just basic information, I think, was in was place. lacking in this space. Totally. So. I'm very open to more ideas about it. I would love to implement anything else people need. <laughs> well, I love that you're you're in this space and we get more women in it. So, yay. And that you're pulling all your friends in too. I was like, <laughs> when I saw that, it was, be- I knew Lynn was coming over, of course. But then when I saw Becky too, I was like, yes. <laughs> I know. It's such an honor to have Becky. I can't even, I'm like, you really want to talk to me every week? I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, has she told you the ceiling raiser, floor raiser tidbit? Yes. Isn't that I amazing? have heard that from Becky. Oh, so we're, what do you think you are? Are you a ceiling raiser or a floor raiser? Oh, I didn't realize that it was that people were different kinds. I've just heard like the general analogy. So what would I be? I don't know. I guess I've never thought about it that way. So the way I took it from Becky is that the ceiling raisers are, you don't want to stop them. You just let them go. You don't put tethers on them. Just let them go. But it's really important to have floor raisers who are the foundation, who are rock solid, and they rise with the ceiling raiser. I think you're so a floor raiser. Interesting. I do too. You're, foundation. I you're think definitely of, foundational. I think of like Megan Rapino as a ceiling raiser. Like, yeah. Yeah. let that sis Come up with her ideas yeah. and we Go will fly. just try to help Go make fly. them happen. Right. Do not hold her back, but I'm definitely a little bit more like not as aspirational. Like, I'll, but hopefully I'll just try to do the basics. <laughs> but here's the thing you do. But you know what? Well, yeah. Go on. We get shit done. <laughs> You respond to emails, you respond to text message, you say, I got you, I'll be there. I can't do this time, but I can do this time. Yeah, that's huge. Good point. That's a good point, yeah. actually. You we noticed shit it. Down, Sam. We you noticed it. Oh my it. gosh, well, uh, you guys, corporate girl typing away on my laptop, I've got that covered. I've got that covered. <laughs> got that Scheduling, covered. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> All right, we need to chat U.S. Women's National Team right now because we Let's just got a roster drop. Let's do this. I don't. We don't get hard into the X's and O's often on this, but I was like, Lynn, we've got to talk a little bit because this is so fun. I mean, all the changes with U.S. Women's National Team right now. Of course, we know we can talk Emma Hayes for sure. But like, let's start first with just like all these young players that they're cycling through. Part of me was like, it's a tight turn between World Cup and Olympics. And in the past, as we know, there hasn't been as much change of the roster. But obviously, new coach, new ideas, uh, not so bueno performance at the World Cup, as we know. So obviously it was needed. But just your thoughts on that younger gen coming through. 
Yeah, I mean, I think something I just noticed, especially with this roster drop, is this younger generation, but also more girls that are playing in Europe, which I do think yeah. is showing some of Emma Hayes's influence. Totally. She's perhaps seeing Lily Johannes play at Ajax, who they're j- just playing in the Champions League tonight. I know that will be old by the time this comes out. Um, yeah. Eva Gate. Eva Gatino uh, at yeah. PSG. So I think those are, one, players who may not have chosen that route 10 years ago to go straight from college or no college right. playing overseas, but also may have not been seen as easily as they are being seen now with Emma Hayes being in totally. Europe as well. So I find that really, really interesting. I'm excited for them. Obviously, like, I've only seen them play maybe once or twice each, so I am really interested to see how they adapt to the environment, especially, like you said, there's really only months, weeks, days of training for this team to be together (laughs) uh, before the Olympics. So, And it's a small roster, so definitely have to see. But it maybe also signals to me this long-term thinking from Emma, like, obviously, She's going to be around. She's going to be hopefully the coach during the World Cup. And is she calling these players in now for the Olympics or is she calling them in now for the World Cup? Mm -hmm. So super exciting when I think when I was playing, these young players getting called in was not as common. Um, And I think it's really important for the future of the program for sure. just the willingness to I mean we're, we're talking April games this is the She Believes Cup where the roster dropped so Lily Johannes to your point 16 years old never has been capped with the United States hasn't lived in the United States since she was 10 years old so she's been in the Netherlands for the last what five what is she six 16 yeah. so six years <laughs> um, and maybe it's she doesn't have her Dutch passport apparently yet, but maybe it's kind of a, a move to get her to the United States and hopefully playing on the U.S. side. But I mean, to be willing even to say, let's let's bring in two players who are, are not even capped. One is 16, not even living in the United States. That just wouldn't have been done before, I think. They would have been like, no, let's just wait. Let's do it after the yeah. World Cup. I mean, after the Olympics. And I, there is a huge part of me that's like, hell yes. When I see, you know, the transformation from Jaden Shaw and Mia Fischel coming in, so sad that she got injured, that I, I think that was a big loss. Um, and you see just this evolution of these younger kids, whether it's uh, Olivia Moultrie or um, even, you know, um, Sam Coffey back in the middle. So it's, I think it's really cool. Something I have been harping on, and I totally agree with everything you said, is the importance of having balance on the roster, though. I think, and yeah. myself included as the media, of course we're like obsessed with these young players and we want to tell their stories and we want to talk about them because they are incredible talents and it's important that we highlight them and notice them and like give them all the praise that they deserve for being called in and deserving of that. But across an Olympics or a World Cup roster, you do need the balance. And so I, as Mm -hmm. now a member of the media, I'm putting this on myself. I don't want to lose sight of like the Rose Lavelles and the Lindsay Horans and the players who have the experience needed to perform at these tournaments and show these young players what it means to be on this team and the expectation in training, the expectation in games and tournaments. Um, That was my up me up yeah. on my soapbox just saying that yeah. Well, that yeah, balance like the across Dunn's, the roster totally sure. yeah and honestly just to be a little stabilizing calming force when when and if as it often does in these tournaments the shit hits the fan who is going to be the one you turn to and be like ah. i mean just <laughs> exactly I saw, I saw lily uh johannes's reaction in that chelsea champions league game this is so random but when she got a yellow card for a tackle and she was so upset about it. And I was like, calm down. Yeah. And you can see like the older players from Ajax were going over to her like, it's okay. She's like, yeah. <gasps> oh. she was kind of like hyperventilating on the field. Like, I was like, it's gotta be okay. You're yeah. just fine. You needed someone to be like, oh, chill out. Yeah, the Carla exactly. Overbeck effect. Yeah. 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 Who, who do you think that is, Sam? Who's On the national a- team? Yeah. I mean, again, I haven't been in in a while. I do think that like Alex Morgan being there, I think that Lindsay Oran has been captain and leading the team in a lot of ways. I know Becky Sauerbrunn isn't going into this camp, but Becky Sauerbrunn has always been my calming effect. Anybody who has who has been there before has the ability to step in and help a younger player in a moment of panic like that, which I know I needed, especially in the 2019 World Cup. 
I leaned heavily on all of the veterans around me, Tobin Heath, Kristen Press, Megan Rapino, yeah. Becky Sauerbrunn, Julie Ertz, to they, Allie Krieger, they took the brunt of the media. They took like the hard things. They dealt with that and it mm. let the younger players just play, which I don't think mm. the importance of that can be overstated. Interesting. Yeah. And th the second part is Mal Swanson back. Yes. Hell yes. And Katarina Macario. I was like, yes. I, and I'm I so know. pleased with Kat, Kat coming back at Chelsea. I mean, Emma sees her every week, all day, every day. But to see her coming back and scoring and assisting and producing is huge. I mean, that, Kat's had two years off with her knee injury. Uh, Mal Pugh Swanson has been out almost exactly, I think, a year. Um, with her patellar rupture. So that's two good signs as well. Hopefully can, they can be back by July. You going to Paris, yeah? I don't know yet. Let's I, go, we, Sam. I go. know, we're going to have to get Plorking. some flights booked. I, yeah, I know. It. You're ah. a pro plorker now. I'm going to send an email right as we hang up from this. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what, if you want so to wear it off right in now, on it's the, cool. <laughs> checking in on Paris. <laughs> <laughs> we really need to book our lodging. <laughs> Um, Lynn? I, I think you took Jules a conference call from the Eiffel Tower at the 2019 <laughs> uh, World Cup. That if I'm not was mistaken. the biggest flex ever. Excuse me, I'm just going to take a conference call from the Eiffel Tower. Uh, I think it's time for the Lynn game. Bring it so on. So, Sam, you're about to go head to head with Julie in a game of trivia. Five yeah. questions, best of five wins, all multiple choice. Oh, God. What's the subject? Crown and anchor. Q and A. I think I'm just gonna keep going Ted Lasso deep cuts anytime there's a soccer player on because I just oh, have okay. so much fun with make coming up with the questions. I've All watched right. I've watched Ted Lasso a lot. All right. And at any point where you think you know the answer, you can you can chime in. And if you could please let us know what your chiming in mechanism will be. Can I just say I met Jason Sudeikis last week? Oh, oh my god, that's cool. I Was know. he nice? so nice oh, i love him so much he went to like shake my hand and i was like come here hug it oh, up, hug no. it up. i no, did no and he was like he was like oh come on so we i gave him a big hug i was like i love you so much okay that's oh enough. so nice <laughs> yeah he was adorable okay carry on jules what do you have as your noisemaker oh and sam is uh, tapping her delicious looking drink with uh, i know right with a very eco-friendly straw uh, well, thank God. Imagine if it was a plastic straw, everybody would be like, boo, <laughs> boo, Sam. <laughs> um, in Sam's honor and Christie's, because they're together in London, I did my re red f British phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Y'all ready? I'm ready. ready. Diving into some Ted Lasso. Question one. What is Coach Beard's first name? Is it A, Kenneth, B, Willis, or C, Henry? Sam. Kenneth. Incorrect. Sam. C, Henry. Incorrect. The correct oh, answer B. is B. B. <laughs> Crabble. Deep. Okay, well, uh, Willis? It's actually revealed. It's. Revealed in the series finale, but it was referenced in season two as well. I did pick that up because I've watched this show so many damn times. Oh, my Willis. God. Yeah. Wow. Willis. Okay, well. Didn't know that one. Okay. Question two. What is the name of Sam Obasanya's restaurant? Is it oh. A, Ola's, B, Oscar's, or C, Opal's? Julie. Oh, C come opals. on. No, C opals. it's A. No, Cor it's A. Correct, it's A. <laughs> also, no shaking the thing like and then waiting 10 seconds. <laughs> I was like, did she freeze or is she cheating? <laughs> I was going with A and then I had this like, no, it's not going to be A. I knew it was an O. Shit. Okay. They were all O's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one nothing me. 
Oh my god, this is so good. I love it. Sam, you can come please come on every week. We can we do a <laughs> weekly podcast together? This is so much fun. Yeah, I'm free, you guys. I oh my uh, gosh, let's podcasts. do this. Make it three in a week, not She's just two. She's a podcaster. Okay, okay, question three. What soccer number did Henry Lasso wear in the series finale? Was it A, <sighs> number nine, B, 11, or C, 13? Julie. Nine. Nine. Correct. Yes! Way to go, Jules. Okay. One to one, baby. We're back. Did you actually know that or did you just guess? No, I knew that because I remember thinking, oh, Mia will be so happy. Yeah. All right. Okay. One to one. All right. Question four. What is Rebecca's childhood BFF's nickname? Flo. That's the that's her real name. What is her nickname? Is it A, Sassy? B, saucy, or C, spicy? A. Correct. Sam is oh, so I confident with her answers. That? Yeah, you I knew that. You guessed that. that. No, nope, You did know. know that? Yeah. You did not. I did. I knew. What do you mean? You yes, I did. I, did you see how calm I was? Is she is she flashing you like it's a, a, a letter sign? What did, You were like, yeah, A. Yeah, I know. I'm calm under pressure, you guys. <laughs> Dang it. Two to one. Okay, I can only tie it. Go. Question five. What does Danny Rojas like to give away for free? Is it A, hugs, B, joy, or C, smiles? Oh, all of it. All the above. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Football is life, Lynn. (laughs) I don't know. I got to get in, though. Okay. Yeah, go for it. I'm going hugs because I hope. Incorrect. Oh, so, Sam, you've okay. officially won. Yeah. I have a fifth. Oh, I already won? You already won. But yeah, if you want to make it a more dominating win, is it B, joy, Always. or C, smiles? Smiles. It's joy. Damn it. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, you can't go wrong with hugs or smiles, though. I know. I only got one right. I uh, I think I'm like O for whatever four or five we're at right now. That's not a good start to this season at all. And I'm pissed about it. I'm gonna. You can't win them all. You can't. Most pressing questions. Sam, Finn, and Swaggy, my golden doodle, need to meet. Oh my god! I I think I've said this to you before, but we need. I when I see Finn on Insta, I'm like, no. Finn is like a smaller version of Swaggy, though. You guys, I am so obsessed with my dog, Finn. It's like... <laughs> I know. Like, it's crazy. I didn't even, like, know that that was possible. I know. The love you can have for a dog. And I've gone down this, like, doodle rabbit hole on Instagram. Oh. oh. Have you done that? Dangerous. I mean, uh, a lot of my... A lot of the content I get served is dogs. Um, right. But I've not intentionally gone doodle down a hole. specifically oh, doodle gram yeah it's dangerous it's it's dangerous um and then uh, i actually i did i just my most pressing questions were really just statements and second that <laughs> <laughs> just most pressing questions finn and <laughs> and um you beat me to a bucket lister you have your own beer with kirsty that i just oh. discovered the musa as in USA. USA. Yes. Uh, so clever. How did it you was get a that? Limit, How do it I was do a that? Limited, it was a limited run. It is no longer oh. available, very sadly. Oh. But honestly, in Harpoon is like a local brewery to Boston. And yeah. it must have been in 2020, like before the Olympics. And then it got delayed. But I, I went to them and was like, do you want to like – brew a special beer together if me and christy both made the olympics it could do really well and um it was so much fun they it was covid so my husband and my friend and my parents had to go to harpoon to taste test because i was in england and christy was in like houston so they picked out the the taste and they like gave (laughs) notes and then they canned it in those cool cans and made it. Yeah. It was like so incredible. It was so much fun. Oh, it was so cute. I, I love yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, and you, you got it done again. Autonomy. See? Got it done. The thing. You decide you, you want your done. own beer. You just got to send yeah. some emails and. <laughs> yep. This is there the theme go. of this, of this pod. 
you can get <laughs> shit done when you take your own autonomy. All right. Lynn? Okay, my most pressing question is, when you go grocery shopping, do you feel strongly about returning the shopping cart? Yes. I return it. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. I had a yeah. feeling. Yep. <laughs> I love that question. I might I might steal that question because that Cheers. tells you a lot about a person. I agree. I agree. Imagine if people were like, nah. Would you just kind of be like, oh, let's cancel this episode? <laughs> I mean, there, were, there would be a line of questioning involved. I wouldn't. Yeah. Go, I don't want to judge. But it does. It tells you a lot. It's I a do. <laughs> I judge. <laughs> my, my son, who's 15, his school, one of their like things they say to him is be be the guy that returns the shopping cart. I love that. <laughs> I was like, I like that. It's a good that. school. That's right? what kids need to learn. Like, right. Yes. Be the guy that helps your mom return the shopping cart. Love that. So every time we shop and he's with me, I'm like, here you go. Thank yeah. you. Yep. And he does. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good lesson. Okay. High, low, cheer. High of your career, low of your career. And your cheer is for someone that you're grateful for who's helped you out along the way. Okay, high of my career, winning the World Cup, duh. <sighs> Low of my career, probably that bout in 2022 when I was like trying to come back from injury and just kept not being able to do it. That was a pretty yeah. low point in my life, let alone my career. Cheer. Oh, I feel like I have so many people to yeah. thank. And I do feel like my husband pat has not gotten enough credit for dealing with me during that whole time <laughs> at the end that was i was not the best version of myself so i'd love to i don't know if he will ever hear this but i would love to send a quick cheer out to pat for all of his support helping me oh, and yay pat getting us through it together it was tough mm. oh i know it's hard Ah, but look what's happening on the other side. I Sam. know. Sorry, See? I didn't want to wrap that one back around to being sad. No. We're all good. It's not sad. <laughs> From the lows come the highs. That is the yes. theme of life, right? Exactly. And yeah. now you're on the other side doing great things, which is going to be so fun to watch. So thank you. I'll also talk to Roger about getting to Paris, but let's great. do Paris together. Great. Let's Sounds go work. Let's do it. I will see you and, in Paris. <laughs> and keep on crushing, my friend. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. You rule. You Tell really do. Tell me for us. I will. And Sam. I will. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I'm so pleased for her, too. All these things falling into place. That transition's hard, as we know. And for her to be crushing it and men and blazers, smart, 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 Raj and Devo to, to say, yep, we're going to take her. So smart. So takeaways, Lynn. What's yours? I thought it was really interesting. This one stuck with me when she talked about just autonomy and waiting for someone to say like, well, yeah, you can or you can't. And, she, and I thought that was really interesting. At one point, she's like, well, shit, I've got to make this decision, right? I have to own this decision. And so I thought that was really interesting that theme because she has had clearly um she's been the 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 driver and decision maker with her playing career obviously now her work career her craft beer career which was their idea um which i thought was fantastic her podcast career uh and then she had to make the ultimate one of like oh i gotta i gotta retire but it was you know it goes back to Dr. Colleen Hacker saying, you write your story, you. Never forget that. Um, and so I just thought that was really cool, all of the autonomy she has had and how well those decisions have served her. Mm -hmm. My takeaway is I appreciate Sam's honesty about her retirement, that it's not what she wanted. And while she has perspective, perspective on the situation it still hurts so just her openness and sharing that with us i i uh i really appreciate her doing so yeah and i'm sure it always will in a sense that um you know she'll always feel it ended earlier than she would have liked so when an injury gets in the way well it is safe to say we will be rooting sam on and supporting her in this next venture 
Go check out mm -hmm. the women's game podcasts online, social media. Go support yeah. Sam, y'all. I'm saying y'all awesome. a lot today. <laughs> y'all ready for some questions permitted? Y'all ready? <laughs> Here we go. What we got? Hi, Lynn and Julie. I loved your recent episode with Kendall Coyne Schofield and Hillary Knight! Exclamation point. Well, thank you. Who's this from? Oh, you'll find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get. I'll get there. You usually give that off the top. I thought you forgot. <laughs> it's at the bottom today. Mm, okay. At the end of the episode, you both talked about raising your hand to have your voice heard. I wanted to first say how grateful I am that you did because as a former women's college soccer player, many of the greatest blessings in my life, I owe to women like you paving the way for women like me. The question is, how did you find the courage to raise your hand in those times? And what would you say to other women and young girls to give them the courage to raise their hands and be heard too? Thank you, mm. Bethany Novak. Mm, that is the million dollar question, Bethany. Good one. Do you want to start then? Or do you want me to? I kind of want you to go. It sounds like you've got something right off the tip of your tongue. Uh, I, I think that is it. That's the hardest thing is that moment where you're like, I don't want to raise my hands. Don't please don't look at me. Don't pick me. Please, God. Um, and as frightening as that moment is, I think what you quickly realize is when you do it once and then you do it twice, that that feeling of, oh my gosh, I can't do this, subsides when you quickly realize, oh, I am doing it. And guess what? I am going to be fine. And so it takes those first few times are going to be the hardest of raising it because you always are going to doubt, 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 doubt. And you have that anxiety and those butterflies. And as Colleen Hacker, to quote her twice to, in this episode, Colleen Hacker used to always say to me, butterflies are so great. Just teach them to fly in formation. It means you care. So taking that nervous anxiety and, and funneling it to a positive place of, oh, this is great that I'm nervous because it simply means that this this matters. I care deeply about this. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I quickly learned is when I raised my hand and I had that nervousness, I could figure it out. And and sometimes you do fall and you stumble, but, mm -hmm. but you know like, okay, I've learned from that and I can move on. So I think um, the vision I would always have is actually these butterflies kind of bumping into each other. <laughs> And then all of a sudden they were kind of flying in formation like, all right, <laughs> mm. I'm going to take them and channel them to a positive place and I can do this. Mm -hmm. But it takes, you know, and there's also that visual of, you know, when you get out of your comfort zone, there's magic on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's the hardest time is just those first few times. And then you get to a place where you actually get excited by the butterflies. Great answer, Jules. And I agree with you on, on a lot of it. I had a chance to think about it and what I had prepared was the more you raise your hand and put yourself out there the easier it becomes mm -hmm. and that it can still be nerve-wracking and every hand raise won't be a thousand you won't bat a thousand with your hand raises in my life I remember the times I didn't raise my hand mm -hmm. more than I remember the times that I raised my hand yeah great point and then I thought of my parents so with true. this question Whereas a young girl, when I was so interested in sports and basically doing whatever my older brother was doing, that they encouraged me. And there is something rooted in sports to this day. Think back when I was a little girl, I was the only girl on my t-ball team and, and things like that. And that stuff sticks. Yeah, that that's a huge point, too, is that when you you mentioned your folks is, you know, kind of opening some of those doors and encouraging you. Um, it's easier to raise your hand when you're in a supportive group. It's not always going to be the case. We know that. But finding those friends who are like, yeah, hell yeah, that's a great dream. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, the Debbie Downers who are going to say, what are you thinking? That's silly. No way is that ever going to happen. I mean, getting around people in a community and friends who lift you up in the most positive ways and encourage you to step out of that comfort zone and raise your hand. I mean, that, hu that, yeah. that hugely helped me with the national team and having those sisters around me 
um, when it got scary and you're fighting for things or you're fighting for equal pay, I mean, that, that matters, the group that's around you. So pick those, pick those friends wisely. That dream squad. Bethany, good question. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to go that deep. <laughs> Next week, maybe we'll talk about straws and envelopes. But for this week, <laughs> continuing on the theme, it's, it's become a bit of a theme this season of raising your hand, raising your voice, putting yep. yourself out there. You got to fight <laughs> for your right to party. All right, before we go, thank you, as always, to our presenting sponsor, Ally, for their continued support, and to Kate Diaz for our theme music, and, of course, to you, our dopest of dopity dopes in the village. And as always, kids, remember, sing it with us. Laughter Laughter permitted. permitted. Professional Pork.